Today's lecture, uh, no, I mean today's lab, is that you work, you can work in your team, but please, you know, keep everyone involved and you switch whenever possible. You still need to commit for at each milestone, just get commit, you know, uh, milestone one, milestone two. So milestone zero here is one of you in your team need to have a, an Amazon account. And Amazon provi provide a free tier, so it should be enough for you to use for the final project, right? As you can see, uh, this one means they can store files for you. Uh, you can have up to two, five gigabyte, and this is good enough, right, for, for your projects. You don't need EC2. EC2 is, uh, um, is for you to host your server, but you're deploying to Heroku, right? Heroku, underneath they use EC2, but you don't have to know. So Heroku is free. Um, that's pretty much it. You don't need this Amazon relational database system because Heroku provide you uh, Postgres SQL, okay? So all these other ones are just for fun. You don't worry about them. Uh, what you just need to do is create an account. And let's say after you create an account, then you have something called the AWS Management Console. Now, for, uh, for uh, Amazon AWS, if you use a EC2, it means you know putting your code on some virtual private server, right? Um, you can choose where your server is. So in general, just you can choose Singapore. Your app will be faster, but of course, it's slightly more expensive than the U.S. But usually, the cost difference is very small. So I would just choose Singapore. However, if you use S3, so out of many services, just click on S3. Then you know it doesn't matter what region it is, because S3 is just general worldwide okay s3 does not require a region so what is s3 simple storage what simple super storage okay simple storage service and now you can create a bucket and then you can upload your files there it feels like dropbox or you know google drive or anything like that however you're doing this with your code so you don't have to create this bucket your code can create the bucket itself so how do we uh, you know use this today if you look at what we have in this lab milestone one is to set up the project that we did back in lab three in week three we have an application uh, oh oh and uh, so give me a second here so we have an application that is like this who remembers this one Come on, raise your hand if you remember this lab. The rest of you didn't go to class? Did you go to class? Did you go to class? So do you remember this one? Okay, so what? Back then, you get this because you see the data, right? But we didn't have any view. So what I want you to do in this lab is to make it possible. So if you go to products.new, you can actually uh, upload an image, okay? Now it shouldn't be like this, but it will. It will be. Let me restart the server. I load the completed app. Your app should allow this. Your app. Uh oh, oh. One second. I think. I think I override. Uh, milestone. What's that? Okay, sorry. Let's see if image path. So this is just one field, right? But we want the app something that you can actually change it to um, file field, right? File field image. So it allows you to upload something called an image like this. Now, but after you select the image and you upload it, it will be saved to first you save to your project. But then when you deploy to Heroku, it will not work. 
so you have to set it up so that it will save to Amazon, right? So milestone two, uh, explain how uh, carrier wave uh, works. It's just a simple, um, it's a gem that provides you a, with a class that you can save any file. So you say, save this file for me. Okay. It does more than that, but in this milestone, you run it so you can understand what it does. So I say, hey, I can create a new thing called uploader and I can save the file and I can load the file again. So just random, uh, you know, um, what do you see, right? Uh, so patiently try to understand this. Ask me if you have any question. And then milestone three is where we put it together. We use carry away and then we will save. Uh, it provides you this syntax mount and then you can save any file to a column in the database uh, of the product um, table, right? Now, how do you think it will save to the product? Does it save the whole file to the database? Huh? The link, okay, the path to the file. Uh, so it doesn't prov you know, save the whole file. Uh, saving file to database is just inefficient, right? Make your database super slow and super big. So what you want is save your file somewhere else and then give it the path. Now, if you don't use Amazon Web Services, uh, you know, Simple Storage Service, S3, it will save in the public slash uploads folder and that works for your local machine. Just fine. So first you do that first, right? I give you a sample file here, get that file, and you can see that it's amazing. You just get the file, right? Because you download it to your folder and then you create a product and it works. Okay, so make sure you change all the code so that it works. But then the question is then, this is, I'm creating this file from the terminal, right? How to create this file from the browser? Then you use the, you know, the form, uh, not text field, file field here. And we store it to the image column, right? Now this image path is for the product that, that you want to link to some other URL. But if you want to upload, you want to use this image, okay? Then we have a problem. Heroku doesn't provide read only. Uh, it doesn't provide a way to write. So if you write to public slash, it will it will complain. Uh, actually, it may let you write to it, and then you refresh, and it's gone. You can write to the temp folder on Heroku uh, when you deploy it. But then again, when you come back, it will just be gone. So you don't want to do that. If you want any uploaded files, you want to save to S3. Now, if you look at the career wave gem, it will ask, tell you to use the fork gem. Uh, so I say, no, don't do that, because if you use the fork gem, it's on some Windows computer, it's harder to build. Look at this guy. If you install the fork gem, it's 30 megabytes. And then this much code to install on your project. But if you use this gem, a uh, career wave AWS, uh, then it, it installs this other gem under the hood and it's much smaller, right? six times smaller. So add this file and now after you install that gem, you can, it's, it's great. You can just provide the values for it to work remotely, so for it to upload files to Heroku. So however, how to you know on Heroku, right? If you load any configuration, you have to load from the... How do you load any configuration? You load it from environment variables, right? So, you want, might want to do the same thing for local machine. You do not want to put any Heroku, uh, you know, Amazon keys on your GitHub repo. If you put it on GitHub, it's open, it's public, you push it to GitHub, and then 10 minutes later, you're like, oh, okay, you know, my friend get it, let me take it down. Well, the problem is, in that 10 minutes, there may be some bots that already crawl, get up, and already detect that you have this key, and that they already save it. So your key is gone, and then tomorrow you wake up, and someone already spent $20,000 on your account. And this happens a lot. 
right? People write blogs about it. And now Amazon, you know, detect that and then will call you and say, hey, did you do this? But, you know, if they're not nice, then you lose all the money. So how to do that locally to, to have the same practice, right? Uh, one way is to go to your system and say environment settings, then insert all these variables. But that's not good because this is just for one project. Therefore, uh, the best, uh, the recommended way is to create this one text file and put all the values in here. Okay, for those of you who don't have an Amazon account, I create some screenshots so you can click on it and see what it looks like. And you can use my credential. I create an account here. You can use this code. All right. Well, I also use it the safe way. So if you use it tomorrow, I don't feel like I just close it. And I don't have to worry. So you can tell your friends this code, and you know, but uh, it's only meant for our lab, right? Um, I can probably restrict it to not spend more than ten bucks, you know. But anyway, it's you, if you're lazy, you can do this. You have to change the bucket because everyone needs to have a different bucket name. Okay? Any question? This jam dot ev right e e n v is just help you load the environment variables from this file dot e n v. Therefore. Please ignore this file in Git. How do you do that? Okay, add that to git ignore. And if you want to make it super fast, you can just write this echo uh, dot env append to git ignore file. And then that just add to the end of git ignore file. Of course, don't be lazy. Just open git ignore and then insert the line in. Okay? Uh, the, the way to make it safe is this thing called instead of using an AWS key for your account, I have instruction on how to create it for one new user and give this user only one permission. So that you don't have this key, secret key that have access to create new server on EC2, create like, you know, new databases. This key I create, it only has access on S3. So that's safer, okay? So at the end, uh, make sure everything works there. If you, if you get here fast, then you know, uh, milestone seven is to add um, some image manipulations. You, you can resize and crop the images. I can, I'll add it uh, soon, okay? Any question before we start? All right.